I, I'd like to call the meeting to order of the Arts and Design Special Committee meeting uh, in person. We uh, do have a camera on us this time, uh, looking at the full shot of the group of us. So just as a reminder to all of you. Um, and uh, we do have a quorum. Um, and um, I want to announce that one of our, our participants, um, Candy, is recovering from hip surgery, so she's not here today. And um, I don't know about Casey. She, I hopefully, will be here very soon. And then Susan Price Patterson um, have resigned because she has so much work to do trying to get herself established in Sun City West. And she just can't feels that she can't do a, a full job on our committee. So she's willing to come back to us um, at some point when uh, she gets her life in order. Um, so uh, that's uh, the status of, of the number of us that are here today. Um, the first uh, item is to approve the minutes from the October 6th meeting. Were there any uh, additions, changes, anything that anybody saw that we needed to do on the minutes? Okay, um, seeing none, then we will accept them as written. Um, and uh, Judy Gilpin has offered to do uh, our minutes for this month in Candy's absence. So thank you for doing that, Judy. Okay, the first thing um, on the agenda is looking at the guidelines for project implementation. And I had sent this out last, uh, our last meeting and you wanted time to digest it. And um, there is you know, one area that I guess was added on and that's um, in terms of the approval of projects. And uh, another area that I'd like to add as well after we have some discussion. So are there any comments on anything that has been written in this document um, in A, B, C, D, or E? Jack. Yeah, looking at C. Letter C, okay. In the first one. Okay. Um, there's one important uh, staff member. I would like some of this to be filtered through regarding their area. Okay. And that would be uh, Todd Patty for landscaping. Okay. There's a lot of things that we uh, think about and uh, make decisions on from a art and design that directly affects uh, Todd Patty's operations. Okay. So where would you suggest we add that? Uh, I would say after the Carl Wilhelm and okay. the capital projects for landscaping needs. Okay. Um, are the rest of you okay with that? Yes. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, any other suggestions on any of these uh, uh, letters here? Are everybody in the in the right spot here? I don't know what you're looking at. Are you missing? Here. No, that's not it. That's the wrong thing. Can you, do you have it, Judy? No, I have the old one. Is that this one? Mm, well, this letter E has been added on to it. Uh, let me see if I have an extra copy in here. I try to not keep too many copies there, otherwise I'm filtering with paper all the time. I don't have another copy on the slide. I thought we had copies for everybody. The rest of you have a copy or not? Okay. Does anybody have an extra one I can share with? <coughs> Letter E is the one I've added. There you go. No, you've got okay. All right. Okay. Um, so um, we're okay with the rest of the statements. Okay. The one the one thing that I think should be added. So I guess that's letter F is. We really need to uh, establish a process um, in terms of um, uh, when there are projects that are set up, for example, 
at Beardsley when they're doing the redo for the end of the of the swimming pool area, <clears throat> and um, that's a capital project that um, Carl Wilhelm is is uh, managing. Um, at what point does the Arts and Design Committee enter the process? Um, sometimes we find that decisions have already been made in terms of color choices, et cetera, and then we're involved at that point. Um, so the question becomes, should we be involved earlier than that before some of those design things should be uh, already decided? So how do we identify at what point we step into the process? Um, we have many other committees that are in a process of, um, uh, you know, they, things have to be presented to them before it's approved and it goes on to the next committee. So how do we wrap ourselves into that kind of a, uh, of what point is it appropriate and how do we then, you know, document that that should happen? So, you know, maybe, uh, Jack, do you have some thoughts on how we could do this or how that might work? Yes, so a lot of the process starting with Carl begins very early, sometimes three years mm -hmm. out, four years out, depending on what the project um, ensues. Um, as it gets closer to uh, pricing things out, he brings vendors out and they will give him a, a ballpark figure, what it would cost, and then from there, um, it gets a little closer, more details and more details. Um, we could take Women's Club for an example. Um, we planned out many of its details, I'm gonna say nine to 10 months before we started breaking ground on that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those details have to go in because they have to find, is this product available? Um, is this gonna be an up cost to the original uh, budgeting of this? And um, so some of it can be tricky depending on the size and scope, but um, our meeting today, we talked a little bit more of how to get art and design committee involved in a lot of the more um, operational stuff that we typically deal with. So there are some thoughts and some, some um, exchanges in how we could implement art and design as opposed to um, just filling it, them in after the fact. So. Right, but no um, concrete solutions at this point. Not but this you're, you are addressing it with other staff, is correct. it? Correct, that's right. Okay, okay, so um, that's for capital projects, but there are also other projects that, uh, that come up that occur and are not that big project kind of thing. Um, thoughts about how that would work? Any suggestions? I've found, am I on? I've found that sometimes, and I know we're a very new committee, so we have to set these guidelines, but it would be nice if we were, if we're chosen to give ideas on the color palettes and so forth of the areas we've been chosen to do, it would be nice for those that are really in control of pushing everything forward to involve those folks in the process. So if they don't like our color palette, or if they do, have us help them wear each color in that particular rec center should be um, given. I, I've been on committees before where you're asked to do a job of picking out furniture or um, whatever, and then you're just totally ignored. <laughs> so I know that there are higher ups than we here at this table, but it, it would be nice to communicate to those that have been chosen to give ideas. I'd like to see it done as early as possible in the process. And you're only working with certain people for, you know, the different facilities. So it's not like all of us. Right, right. Um, and that was the point of kind of establishing contact people that um, would make it easy for staff to connect with. Um, you're talking about Beardsley, then you know you get to Nancy and she gets the right people together. Um, 
et cetera, with the different um, sites. Um, is this something that we want to have you continue to try to work at um, and come back to the committee with something written a little bit later on? I would encourage that we have a sit down with uh, Carl uh, Wilhelm, the uh, project manager, as well as uh, Russ Boston, the facility manager, and kind of get their feel and get their um, cooperation. Okay. And so we could sit down and we could look at future projects. For instance, when Carl has projects that are lined up, slated for that year's budget or the next year's budget, uh, we sit down and we, we talk about the, the planning okay. process. Now, I don't know if that's a good time for art, art and design or the small group of art and design to come mm -hmm. in, but we got to figure out how that would work with their operations. Mm -hmm. It'd be okay. kind of hard for us to say, this is how we'd like you to do it for us. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so um, maybe our, our project wording in here talks about um, uh, establishing a pattern of inclusion uh, with the specific projects that we're working with? I would agree with that. Okay. Okay, are we good with that concept? Okay, and then we would rely on Jack to set up that meeting, uh, knowing when that, that timing could be. Okay. Okay. Um, Are we ready to move on to the next one on our artist waiver form? Okay, what happened with this is um, I got the copy of the art waiver, of uh, liability waiver, so that we could um, make sure that if we're hanging art that we're not held responsible. So then Candy uh, took that and she adapted that to um, a larger audience, in other words, Sun City West, rather than just art. And at that point, then, what she worked on, then I sent, or asked the general manager to send to the uh, association attorney to review. And this is the product that came back from that, um, that process. And I, it, it looks fine to me, and as long as the attorney has been <laughs> checking it out, <clears throat> I think that that's really um, important that we use this then if we're going to hang any kind of art that belongs to um, local artists so that they understand that, you know, if we have a fire here, well, or something gets damaged, that um, they can't sue us. So are we good with, with this? The only comment I would have... Yes. I, I Turn on your... Um, punch the middle yeah, button. That's right. Okay. The only comment, I did this for the art club. You did, okay. And we put a witness signature on it. Mm. Um, so that when they signed it, somebody witnessed it, just because you never know what's going to happen. Okay, you want me to inquire from the attorney about the need for that? If there's a need. Okay, I will make that... Um, request and just verify that we do or don't need that. Um, typically, we would always have a witness because if you're responsible for hanging somebody's art, you'd be <laughs> asking them to sign this paper, correct? So correct. it wouldn't be an inconvenience. It's a very simple. Mm -hmm. simple. Right. Okay. Um, any other comments about this? Okay. I will check and find out if we need to have that or not, and make that change if, if necessary. It should be easy to do. Okay, um, Dropbox status. Uh, um, Jack has set up a Dropbox so we can put a, in our pictures. Um, and then we've got Candy, Judy, Judy, Shelly, Kat, and myself that have signed up to um, be able to put things in and take things out. Anybody else that wants to also be included in the bill? In the Dropbox, what happens is if you've taken a picture of uh, a project that you're going to work on or a completed project that you want to go into a publicity phase, you would um, put that into the Dropbox. And then we have access to that. So then somebody that's writing an article could take that out and we'd be able to send it someplace or project it up here. 
So if you if you would like to have your name added to that, then Jack can tell you how to do that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. Yep, for anyone that's not familiar with the Dropbox, it's a cloud-based storage that you can access from anywhere. So I could put something in there and my team over at Koontz can look at it or put something in there and you can pull it from there, download it, and then share with, you know, art club or photography club. But it's just a, another tool that we can share and, and collaborate with. Okay. Um, okay, then we have this the famous uh, spreadsheet that, that Carl started for us. And um, the only places that we have changes, because I think the rest of the um, center people hadn't met yet, uh, was on um, Kuntz, correct? Kuntz was updated and Palm Ridge. So um, those are the ones that would have uh, additional things on and quite frankly because I was doing this I just added them onto the bottom because Excel is not my expertise <laughs> so this is um, a work in progress and um, I just kind of tried to update things on, on the edges and um, at some point yeah we probably want to go through and redline the things that we decided weren't appropriate. You know, we changed our minds about these things or we've checked into them and we came up with a better idea. Uh, so I guess uh, it's probably not good to remove them totally because then you don't have a record of what, you, what your ideas were in the beginning. But um, as your committee works and you work from this, um, you can let me know which things you want to redline and, and um, work from that. Um, and as the other groups meet and have changes, um, you can filter that information so that these can uh, continuously be updated and place to work from. Please. Yes. Um, so if there's changes that have been made already, mm -hmm. do you want to know that right away or should we wait until there's a time we're gonna filter it all together or? Well, I think that you can um, make the red lines and then get that to me. Okay. And then I'll take care of that, or secretary will take care of that, or Jack will take care of that. You, would you rather have them come to you, Jack? Yeah, I think having one person control the spreadsheet, the better. Otherwise, you get formatting messed up. Like, just looking at it from here, I'm just looking at it, I'd want to go through and even out all the spacing, uh, maybe right. get rid of all the red, the, the red question marks were put in by me when I was to update it the last time I updated it. So I would just unify it and update. And I also think it'd probably be nice to have as a record things that we did accomplish. Maybe yes. um, have a separate spot after they're accomplished. Mm -hmm. Like things I see done, right? Mm -hmm. But right. have a separate spot that shows all the done stuff so that we can look back at a year's end. And, you know, there's all these projects that we wanted to push forward or we're anxious to happen, we can at least look back and see what we've already accomplished. Okay. All right. So then um, Jack will manage the Excel sheet. Yep. And I know that Karen did some things with formatting yep. because otherwise it didn't fit on the page and it was so small you couldn't read it without a magnifying glass. So <laughs> um, I, I don't know how that affects what you're doing. But um, the other, yeah. other thought was that if we wanted more columns, We'd be, we would be able to do that, too, if we wanted to capture any, any more information. Uh, for example, we might want to add on to here which club is, is displaying their things. And so there, we could add columns um, as we move along. So OK, so the decision then is to send your changes to Jack OK, as you make them and whenever. OK. All right, um, then uh, future of the committee. Um, and I am pleased to announce that Kat has agreed to chair the committee. Yay, thank you, thank you, Kat. She has agreed to what? To chair the committee. Ah, good. 
So um, I will be stepping down from that position because I've got enough of a workload and I'm putting you in capable hands and I will be, uh, I'll be around and helping her as well. But I really appreciate her stepping up um, to, um, to take the spot. Um, in terms of whether this becomes a permanent committee or if it becomes a different kind of committee, we've got some months to think about that and uh, we'll um, see how that moves on. One of the difficulties is that if it, be if it remains uh, a governing board committee, it has to have, and if it becomes a permanent committee, it has to be chaired by a governing board director. So that difficulty is out there, and then there are lots of other restrictions that go along with that. So there are some other options uh, with things like we have a committee like Torch, and we have election committee, and that does not have um, a director leadership. So there are some other options that we can look at and other ways that, that this could happen, but let's give ourselves some time to think about that. We don't have to worry about that at this point. And, um, Okay, next item, uh, community art project. Um, we originally talked about uh, Susan Price Patterson doing the community art project that we talked about last time uh, relative to Rip and Soul taking the leadership uh, with the paint by number cloth uh, rug concept. Um, I did share that with Susan, and she said, oh, she said, that's right up my alley. It's a great idea. I, you know, I would have loved to have done it, but I just don't have the time, and I can't, you know, continue on the committee. So um, we need somebody to take that on. Um, as you know, I've, I've um, gotten the full support from um, Rip and Soul to do the project, but there needs to be somebody that connects with Rip and so to assist them with um, the steps that they should go through. So I'm wondering if there is someone that wants to take that on. And for um, Lois and, and Mickey's uh, uh, information, uh, I guess I should explain the, the concept again, right? You don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, we wanted something that the, the community could participate in. And the, the idea is to have a large um, chicken wire and um, um, wood frame in, on the wall in the area of Kuntz Courtyard between the Palo Verde Patchers and the Weavers, as there's a large wall that's under a protected um, covering. And um, on that chicken wire it will be some type of a design, either a landscape or a bunch of flowers or um, whatever um, an assigned artist could come up with to draw that matches the kinds of fabrics and the colors that uh, Rip and Sew has. They have a, a quantity of donated uh, fabric and they would cut those into strips and um, then community members and clubs could come over to the courtyard and tie on as many of those uh, strips that they would like into the chicken wire. And when you get done, you're going to have a painting out of fabric. And you would, and there's a lot of wind. It's sometimes a wind tunnel in that particular spot uh, at Coens. And so you'd have these uh, fabric pieces kind of floating in the in the breeze, and um, it's it's a simple enough project that you don't have to know how to sew, you don't have to know how to paint, you don't have to <laughs> know how to um, design something. People would just come and take, okay, this is uh, paint by number, this is color number four, and here's color number four in the painting, and you just tie them on to um, that whole area that has blue in the next area maybe has red and so then that red number three you tie onto that spot. Shelly you're looking uh, confused. Are you looking for someone that's going to design this? We would need somebody an artist to design what the picture is and my concern is that they need to go over to Rip and Sew and, and find out what kind of colors they have in quantity. When I asked um, Debbie Dorn uh, who is the 
coming president. She said, well, brown, we've got a lot of brown. And I thought, well, it's not real exciting, but that could be the frame that goes around the painting or some other thing. So sometimes if you looked at the colors that are available, then an artist would get an idea. So yes, I need somebody to do a design because Rip and Sew is not gonna do that piece of it. So somebody has to do design and then, then we would have to ask the wood shop to do the chicken wire frame. And then uh, Rip and Sew will take care of getting the strips and figure out how they're gonna do that part of it. Uh, but somebody from this committee needs to make sure that all those pieces get, get taken care of. So that's kind of the, the process. Do it. Shelly. Great. I'll do it. Thank you very much. Thank you. I know you've done that in schools before with uh, community project kinds of things with kids, so that, that will be great. I'd be happy to help with, uh, what would you call it, the process? Okay. Or help you to organize the process okay. once the design's been designed. All right. Super. Super. Okay. And Debbie Dorn is the uh, gal at Rip and Soul that, that you would connect with. And we'll also need um, a lot of publicity on this um, because once it's organized, we need then community members to, to understand that they can come over and um, participate in the project. And you'll have to kind of determine the size that's appropriate too. Uh, I'm just guessing 10 by 20. Do we already but, know the location? Um, yes, on the wall between the Palavari Patchers and the Weavers. It's a huge wall. Judy can kind of show you um, where that is and, and determine the size that might be the best for it. So, great. Thank you very, very much, Shelley and Judy. Okay, then the fun part. Let's go on to um, giving some progress on, on your projects and the things that you have been working on. I know some of the some of you have been working together, and um, we've got some pictures that might um, come up here. And maybe, Shelley, you want to talk about your, yeah, as far as the process, I, I, in terms of how far along have you gotten with the WAVES idea that we're going to be at the R.H. Johnson pool? What's the status? I just did some more drawings. Uh, that's really all I did. I tried to make it more reasonable in size. Um, Jack and I have talked about this, whether it's paint or metal or whatever. Um, I went over and pasted it off and I found that, you know, that wall is, I think I decided it was about 75 yards or feet or whatever. And um, anyway, so these waves, they seem to be from 10 to 15 feet long. Um, which may still be really too big, maybe for metal. So I, I, I just did some more sketches because the first ones I did were just preliminary ideas. Okay. I just tried to fine tune it. <clears throat> I think you have, a, there's one more, if you can put to them. Yeah, right, those one. are a lot bigger, so I don't know. So we're, we're still just... A work in progress, right? Work in progress as to whether that would be paint or metal, and what you're saying is metal might be... It's too large. I don't know because, you know, if it was a 15-foot wave uh, at the metal club when you're cutting metal on the laser thing, you can only fit in four feet. And so these would have to be welded together, Piece. which may not look real good. Uh -huh. So maybe paint is better. Um, uh, I would just, you know, like comments on, are these too big? You know, do we need to... So what do the rest different? of yeah? What? Those are just some ideas. That's all. What do the rest of you think at this point? <clears throat> Please, I take criticism very well. <laughs> <laughs> and if you remember, the uh, original ones were thinner and they looked more like a, a continuous line kind of thing. A little yeah, different, different. I from like these. the first design better than this one. Okay, good. The one that and this is painted. That, yeah, or the bottom one. one. I like the bottom. This so, one? yeah, yeah. Jack and I talked about this. Um, like, we wouldn't be the ones to paint it. Right. It would be hired out. Right, Jack. Yeah, I I do see a, a challenge to fabricate these in steel. I'm not saying it wouldn't be done, but you'd need a, a skilled craftsman to be able to design this all out in CAD, and then 
cut it all, assemble it, and they would have to be in pieces that are manageable that you could hang. You'd yeah. have to drill holes and and uh, set them into the, the masonry work. So that's a bit challenging and, and complicated, doable. And this would be an, an embossment of some sort. Um, so they'd have to stick out a little bit. And if you have two different elements and designs, you may want them, you know, sh overlapping each other as well. So it would it, it would take a, a skilled craftsman that would get pretty expensive pretty quick, in my opinion. The painting as well would be something that you would just contract out to a to a vendor. Is the how question I, I had was, if um, you know, I was thinking about somebody up on scaffolding painting mm -hmm. these and thinking, did you want them more chopped up so it's not so much scaffolding, or would the longer designs be better? Does it matter? I think we would just have to de decide on our design and then bring it to the vendor. Like mm -hmm. personally, I like number two better, but. The second one, but this one, this one right here, that the bottom one, bottom one, in my opinion. But mm -hmm. well, I'll just add that I think I like them all, but the simpler, the better, because the simpler we keep it, the less expensive it'll be. Um, have we checked into um, the the uh, um, Signs the that uh, the designs that we see on the uh, overpasses and the roadways to find out what those are made of. If there's something cheaper, like are they made of some kind of plastic? I mean, how did they get those things? I think many Do of those are are cast into the design. So either they're precasted into the design and painted, or yeah. Okay. Could these be cast and then? adhered on to the building, no? I think that'd be incredibly heavy. Oh, okay. Yep. It would there would be a design implementation that would have to be done prior to building the construction. Okay, so we just need more time to process. And anybody else that wants to <laughs> draw some? <laughs> no, you've given us <laughs> the greatest <laughs> ideas. Yeah. I think I think you've given us some great designs in the past and and up here as well. So we would need someone to go out and approach some vendors to get some ideas and what it would take time time frame and cost what it would take. So I think that would be our next step is right. here's a design that we're looking at. Can you do it? When can you do it? How long will it take and how much it will cost? I think is the next step in that. Um, okay, and we're assuming that that's not able to be done at our metal shop when it's up and running? Well, like we said, the, the table's only four feet wide, and some of these are 12 feet. So if you did it in metal, it'd have to be cut separately, put together, and then you've got a seam, mm -hmm. and that would show. So we're thinking maybe metal's not the way to go. It would look really cool, but mm -hmm. very expensive. Probably the painting is better. But maybe we need to be, you know, this needs to be simplified. Okay. Yeah. What about OSB, the material they use for highway signs backing it? Could we do something out of OSB and paint it? It's a thought. I'm not sure I can check into that. We could do it in panels, you know, and then it could be... I don't know what size OSB comes in, but um, they're usually like four by eight, four by twelve. You know, they're large. Sure. Yeah. What does what does OSB? OSB? It's an outdoor graded plywood sort of material that, that they make road signs on. Yeah, like that, thirty-five that, miles an hour kind of thing. Yeah, the okay. metal is put on this OSB. What color is the building that this is going on? Tan, kind of a tan, tan. color. Yeah. So you're Light doing tan. it in two shades of blue, you think? Right. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. That would look good. Right. I think painting is the way to go. I think yeah. it would be the one that lasts the longest, uh, is the most reasonable priced. Mm -hmm. um, it is in an area that's going to get constant south sun. So we know that it'll probably fade no matter what. Probably that's true of whatever 
whatever goes up there, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So more investigation. Okay. All right. Um, what else do we have on our on our photos there, Katie? Okay. Judy. Okay. Um, these are totems that uh, have been done by the Clay Club, and the one on the far left is uh, being done as we speak, two of them, and um, they're very secure on the bottom. They have a heavy base, and uh, we're gonna, we've ordered two for the Kuntz courtyard and one for inside the lobby to be determined for safety issues where it's gonna go, of course. And then, Jack, you need to help too, of course. You need to tell me how, how these are gonna work. Once they're done, we can decide what's up with them. Yeah, and the, and the pair are gonna go yeah. in the old courtyard. Yeah, Alongside the double doors yes, that go into the- Yes, on the double French doors on the outside. It's where the band's set up, so it would be kind of a framing for them. Mm -hmm. um, if it's a safety, safe right. issue there for that. Right, are these the ones you're looking at acquiring or yeah. are they similar? No, they're, we're ordering, we've ordered the ones on the far left. What it is is it's kind of like typical things of Arizona. Sure. The cactus and the kind of some whimsical things of Arizona. So what they do is they have, each of the artists will come up with one of their little individual tote totem things and then they'll put it together and then um, once they get that all made they'll put it together over at Coons and then we can take a look at it and see safety wise if it's what I think it should go if it's possible to go there right mm -hmm. and keep in mind that courtyard has some pretty lumpy ground too so leveling would, would be a challenge but definitely something worth looking at um, I do have a question in how we procure those are we purchasing them, or are they donated? Um, the the work is, the, do you want to talk, Sue? Okay, the work is all donated. Um, the, we put in the budget, I think it was 300, but they, the last they came to us, it was 550 for all three of them. And the, the thing that's the most cost is the base. They have to purchase the base to make it safe and heavy. Right, um, just, just on that topic, did we look into with the, the tax responsibilities that we're going through right now, is that gonna affect that at all? It, it's, for some reason, my understanding, I may have this wrong, is that it's tricky dealing with some of the 503Cs and and us trying to purchase things from clubs. I know there's there's a weird balance that I'm not fully understanding, but I think that's something that we should investigate before green lighting this fully. It's just the purchase of the clay. Right, but so, the rec center's purchasing stuff from the clubs. I know that there's right. a goofy thing, like for instance, if maintenance needed something from the uh, metal shop and they, wanted to buy it there's a goofy thing that there it, okay. it gives them a challenge that the rec center is purchasing something from a club but the club wouldn't be making any money it would be even right I they buy the clay we pay them for the clay and the members donate their uh labor i, I still believe it's a gross income how do we find out about that does someone want to volunteer what about if we just made a donation to the club um, from the I, I, Arts so and gross. Design Committee? Would that be worth something? Yeah, no. Um, I think we're going to be fine, but um, I would suggest, Jack, that you talk to um, I'll talk finance. To, uh, and I'll have to talk to clubs as well. All right. Well, I'll, I'll talk, look into talk to finance yep. about how we would do that. Okay. Yeah. Do we have an approval on the components that go in before they get it all assembled so that we're all cool with everything that's being represented and the way it's the quality and the... Well, that's, yeah, I'm not sure about that because um, it's going by what 
I saw in the picture, mm -hmm. and they knew what the theme was. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we've got artistic liberty here, mm -hmm. so I won't know until I see it. Okay. I saw this in person. My husband and I walked around and looked at everything in the in uh, Beardsley, and uh, it was cool. I mean, that is that is yes. a cool thing. That one. Yeah, I've never seen one that I haven't liked. <laughs> right, yeah, they're all, all different and they're all... Yeah. I don't know that my microphone is working here. Maybe I should... Okay, yeah, this one is working. Okay, um, what's next? So that's kind of what's happening at, okay. <laughs> this, uh, you wanna go ahead, Judy? No, <laughs> you go, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. talk about this. <laughs> um, the, the weavers stepped up and said that they were going to be happy to produce a beautiful wall hanging for us um, for the Coons Courtyard. And this is what they came up with. And I believe what I've seen is the colors rather mimic the, the, West, the Sun City West logo, if you mm -hmm. look at it closely. And it's, um, so that's, that's what I know. Okay. Uh, Jack, have you had success in figuring out how you're going to hang this? Not yet, but I can get on that. Okay. I, I, I have an idea and a concept. I just have to run it through facilities first. Okay, okay. Because it's ready and it's wrapped up and sitting at the weavers. You got it. Because Pam is out of town, so. Okay. What, what's another picture? Um, yeah, and uh, Candy's group worked on this. Um, uh, you want to you talk about that? I don't. Oh, you don't know? Oh, oh, yes, I'll talk about this. We uh, from gathered, I think we've got 15 photos from the photography class, and uh, about a week and a half, two weeks ago, we uh, hung them on the wall in the uh, social hall. And uh, I don't know how long we're going to leave them. I don't know whether we're going to rotate them. Yeah, there will um, be some kind of a rotation. But there will be some kind of a rotation. They're all framed alike, and we just mixed a lot of different subjects together for interest. So I guess Jack will tell us when he wants well, to the, the photography club, I think, had, um, rotates every two weeks at the library, and I thought Candy said they were going to do the same here, although they could maybe last longer here. I, you know, I think that's up to the photography club because they just take that photo out and put a different photo in. Yeah, so right now they're so, on the two-week cycle. So these all came from the library. And there's another there's another smaller section of the wall that's on the yeah, other side. Yeah, two, two sides. Side. Yeah. I don't know if that second yep. picture so is the in next, there or not. So the next weeks, this one is far more random. There's They're usually more aligned on a theme. So the next theme that I get will be all abstract. So it'll be kind of cool to see when it comes. Oh, okay. So the, the photography club knows that it's every two weeks, Yeah, right? so, so yeah. photography club helps with the switching out. They're okay. kind yeah, of... Yeah, they take care of the process. Yeah. So, so this is actually um, a club that is familiar with doing that process yep. at the library, and this is just an additional right. site, and that so that system is now set up. Right. So that will just continuously happen, and this is in the east entrance. Correct. Is and is there something similar that the art club does them? Yeah, it's very similar what the art club does at the library. So they rotate and change. So, but the art club doesn't do this here at this building not yet <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I believe that that the other plan for the full back uh, back of the social hall that there's a, a long wall um, that we had contacted um, independent artists and they were willing to put up their artwork on that wall and Jack was checking into getting uh, the locking um, hangers 
so that we didn't have to worry about theft because their works are, you know, one of a kind, as opposed to photography was not concerned <coughs> about theft. Um, and I don't know, Jack, what's the status of that? Have we found a price on those? And Yeah, they've, if you just go on Amazon and start looking at some of those locking hanger systems, you get lost very quickly. And I know I uh, went and looked at the ones at the library, and I felt that those were a little cheap and flimsy to me. Okay. Um, I was thinking that we'd probably need to go out and uh, plan for some nice ones that go on a, a sliding system as opposed to just the, uh, there's ones that are called the T-lock, so it goes in and you turn it, quarter mm -hmm. turn. But those are all drilled, anchored into the wall, and what we keeps you from it. pulling that anchor out of the wall is just brute force. And then you got a, a fairly large hole in the wall, too, that every time you want to put something in. So the, I think the, the grid system and the hanging system is the way we need to go. We just need to find one that I think is better quality than the one at the library. Okay. And, and was that the, the, the ones at the library? That was the recommendation of the art club because Correct. they had ones that they were using? Correct. Okay, so Correct. You want, you're looking for stronger ones but the Sim same Similar time. but strong. Sim better okay. quality. Correct. Okay, so that um, then these independent artists group was willing to display their, their works there. Um, and I think we were also going to use the entrance, there's one wall that could handle a couple of those paintings at the west entrance to the social hall. Okay. Is there that much theft of uh, art around? We don't, we don't know. We've had a little, there was one incident in the women's club, um, and um, that was just commercial art that was taken. So, right. Um, the, the problem is that um, these are common areas, and, and you've got a lot of people in and out, and some places are more secure than others. For example, one of the other projects, and this is jumping ahead, but um, what's the difference, I guess? Um, the, um, this particular room, for example, is only open when somebody is in here and it's being monitored. It's not a place where people can just open the door and walk, walk in into an empty room. So this has more security than some of our other places. And um, R.H. Johnson Social Hall is pretty open. So it kind of depends on where things are, are located. And what we're looking at, and I'll just jump into this area, um, in here, um, as I've contacted the, the Patchers, or I guess Judy had started with contacting the Patchers, and we didn't find a place to display their items because it was all outside at Coons. And so um, we needed a secure place and a place that's away from the sun and all that kind of stuff. So um, at this point, we're going to plan to hang uh, two quilts on either side of the board that's in right behind me. So we'll have a beautiful place to display their quilts, um, two of them. And we're waiting now for the exact correct um, rods and hangers to um, be able to purchase those so that we can hang quilts. And they will rotate those every month. Every month they have. I said, you have enough quilts for that? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, they're willing to do that that rotation. And what's happening in the social hall, um, or at social hall, I'm sorry, the lecture hall, is that uh, we are having uh, some construction here next month. In fact, our next meeting will be held over at Coons in room five instead of here. Because they're filling in these uh, steps that go down here and down there that the railings are covering so that we're not... Uh, um, so confined with um, walking around that, and that door over there is being eliminated. Okay, um, this door is being moved way over to this to the end of this wall, um, and um, for an exit exit door. So these two will be clean walls here that um, have a spot, uh, and so uh, that will be done and probably by the end of December we would be able to hang those those quilts so that when we come back here in January, we will have um, the quilts on either side. So I'm just waiting for the quilters to give me the exact specs on what kind of a, a rod. They have, um, it's a rod that has clips all the way across and so it's easy you know, to, to make that change kind of thing. And it can accommodate different widths and that kind of thing. 
So that's kind of an up a plan for what's happening in here. Okay, what yeah, else? Yeah. Have... Oh, here's the other wall, Judy. Oh, that that's, that's the opposite, wall opposite. In the, yeah, in the entrance. Okay, I just have a question. Is the photography club then going to take care of rotating the photos? Yes. Or do Candy and I still and Lois still well, have to be there or is it under there? It's, it's, was, it's been a joint effort so far, as you've seen. Um, they are a fairly self-sufficient club that helps and gets the ball rolling where you're not having to go say, hey, help me with this project, hey, help yeah. me with this project again. But um, I will say the last time Candy was there, she was hurting from the work. It, it does take effort to pull all the things off, change out all the pictures and hang them back up. But Right. So, but the photography club now is, and if they need one of us, they can contact us well, or you will. Or? Well, Candy was kind of in charge of helping place she, where it all goes. Yeah, right. she's, she's part of the club. Oh, and she's part she's of the club. She's a member of the club. That's oh, why. I didn't understand that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And the next uh, thing we were talking about, security of art. Right. Doesn't the artist waiver form take care of that? Yes, it does. <laughs> but. Um, I, I believe it's to buy confidence from the artist. Right. If they're somewhere safer for it to go, knowing that they just signed all the rights away to this piece of art, that it goes somewhere that they feel a little more comfortable and confident putting it in. Right. That's yeah. I understand. Okay. okay. What else do we have on the pictures? Oh, Judy. This is at Kuntz. This is the Kuntz pool proposal. Found some tile that I thought was fabulous to go around the pillars. You can see um, this somebody, I don't know who, but superimposed it on there. The pillars right now are just plain blank. Uh, they have nothing ar going around that top rim there. Um, and as is the hallway, there's nothing, no decoration of any sort. So um, we found this tile, and Jack, why don't you tell us where we're at with that cost? So I did look at this update, and the cost, I think, was a little under what we kind of figured out. So for material costs, it's about 2000 probably double that. So we're about four, between four and 6000 for a professional installment of this. I don't think it's terribly expensive. Um, I do know that when we went through properties committee and we showed them and, and demonstrated this, they, they scoffed at it. They were like, we, when we wanted to bring it through properties committee, I think towards the bottom of um, project approvals, it talks about committees or what we run through. So we just kind of felt that it was safe because it's changing the structural, you know, something permanent to a building that properties committee get involved and see if they would buy into it and they didn't have any buy-in with it. So I'm not sure where this plan goes forward. The, the price was about 6000 for the whole project? I, no, I believe closer to, I would say conservatively, for four to 5000 And that includes the, the product as right. well? Right, And it also, it only covers what, what a, a foot down? Nine, uh, nine inches. Nine I think. inches? Yep. But it goes around the whole thing, uh, the whole pillar on all four sides. And so that does bring some decoration and lighting into the hallway that's rather dark and has no other decoration at all. Yeah, and as I remember, we tried, we had other ideas like, oh, hanging flowers. And we talked about vases and we talked about things on the wall and, and then came to the pillars. And um, I don't know if that's an option for using paint instead. They didn't. A lot wanted to happen is that what you said Jack? they weren't impressed they weren't but then they're looking at property um, quality and mm -hmm. they're not looking at art right. you know, did you bring the sample uh, we, we brought the pictures and that also properties committee got to see is there another picture after this yeah I think there is that they, they got to see this in uh, firsthand uh, the, their opinion was that it looked gaudy to them. They didn't. They didn't think it was. Uh, just, they just felt like we're just hanging jewels on the wall, kind of sort of thing. But I, I personally like it. I know it takes quite a bit to do it, um, but 
I, I don't know how to push past properties committee to bring this forward. Well, we, we don't really need approval right. of properties committee. We We'd want just, their support, right? Yeah, we would like to have some support, right. but, um, but yeah. Another question, you know, because we are a new committee, and how does that relate to other committees? And um, technically, we all just give recommendations, and the board is supposed to decide. So, you know, um, it, it's a real question for our committee where where we stand. So, is it just the border that we're doing, or the whole yes. pillar? Yes. Yes, just just that border that's shown in, up there all, around all four sides. Just the yes. blue on all four uh, sides. Along all four sides. Oh, of I each see. One. There it is. Yeah. What if we just paint them? <laughs> yeah, that's what I just said. Yeah. What What about maybe painting that whole area? That top part. That top. Well, the the yeah the top part. Um, then it would be more than nine inches. In, in my opinion, <coughs> what do you think, Judy? In my opinion, I think you'd lose the artistic touch of the tiles because the tiles have is they're multi-dimensional mm -hmm. and they're all different. And I, to me, that would be a little bit tacky. Okay. I think if you, if you painted, you'd have to paint the whole white thing. Yes. And if you painted, I think that'd be too much. Yeah. I, you could paint them technicolor, one of each color. <laughs> I think one of the things is to determine what projects we want to really work on that require right. our funds, and then take that 30000 and allocate it and prioritize those projects. Mm -hmm. And I love this idea. I love picking up the blue around the pool deck, up on the pillars. I think it's great. Yeah. And let's you know take some time. We all look at our areas we're responsible for and submit a project idea, see how the funds fall out, and then we can okay. start making placements. And this may fall being number one or three or whatever. Okay. But, um, we all kind of have ideas on our facilities, what we want to do, but we really haven't uh, received quotes or bids or you know right. gone to a more of a uh, more finalized stage. Whereas Judy's a, you know a wonderful overachiever, and she's done all these wonderful <laughs> things. <laughs> <laughs> the other, that's a good idea, Kat. The other idea would be that each each um, project area get an allotment. You know, like let's say every grouping gets 6000 or whatever. You know, that's just another way to look at it possibly. But yeah, you're right, Kat. Yeah, I, I think that that's a, that's a really good idea so that we would end up with a list of um, projects and one of them might be the waves at R.H. Johnson, okay? And say so we decide, you know, that that's... Six thousand dollars, and then we decide that this is a four thousand dollar project, and then there might be some other things with our big item things. Um, I don't think we need to do that with the small things, but um, then we end up with a list, and we determine how many of those and which ones um, are ab absolutely the priority of the group. I think I think that that's a, a good way to go. Okay, so um, this is just the other picture of the the other wall. Okay, here come the cactus. So the ca cactus are finished. To, okay. Who's? I want to do a little more like around the bottom. Oh, <laughs> make it more integrated with the ground, and you know, just some grasses, some very just simple things, because it kind of just you know, it needs some more flow and movement. Anybody? No, <laughs> start over. <laughs> um, I want to really thank Shelley. She like went above and beyond with this yeah, painting. Quite project. a few hours, I understand. A lot of time. We were there a long time, both of us. Yeah. So I want to uh, across the bottom put some more grasses and small things, just kind of to give it more of a flow and connection point. See the large we call it. What do we call that? Big Daddy or something on yeah. the left. And then that agave or aloe, whatever that plant is, is kind of overlapping. Just kind of some more things. Just kind of make it a little more. Yeah. Okay. But well, if it's some rabbits. A very popular place, hasn't it? But all because of this cactus wall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All because of what? Uh, you notice I painted a couple of cactus on the wall and they're no longer there. <laughs> <laughs> that Not, was our decision. Not our decision. Not our decision. They got, you know, the heat got to them. 
Yeah. Yeah. Not our the decision, upper heat, Judy. The upper level heat. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, I, I think that's the end of our pictures. Uh, you do think you were, we're done? We're not necessarily done at, uh, um, at Lizard Acres. You know, we could have more ideas So besides those, those painting things. But one thing that I did uh, kind of investigate was having some kind of a history board on the entrance to um, uh, Lizard Acres. And in the meantime, I found a, a person who was willing to pull that together and work with uh, pe people in uh, calligraphy. And um, I don't know what the status is going to be. This person isn't back in town, so hasn't done any work yet. But in the meantime, then found out that Jack was also doing some history of Lizard Acres. And Kat, I think you were involved with that or whatever. And so what's the status of your little project um, at the village, the old village store windows that have ugly white paper <laughs> over I, them. I was trying to keep that under wraps, Sue. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no. Um, <laughs> I'm currently, and it's not just Lizard Acres, it's kind of just historical Sun City West pictures. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to get uh, then and now pictures because okay. you know, over the last 40 years, so much of this community has shifted and changed. And uh, I just think it'd be really cool. I currently have two now and then pictures. I'm trying to get a handful of more. And when I get them, I'm going to get them printed, put on, uh, easels and just displayed in the window from now until right until the construction uh, phase. until the construction yep. phase okay just to give something when people walk in and say seeing a blank window or there was my village store you know they can say wow you know distract them and and actually engage in the in the art of of then and now so i got a couple and i want to be able to get enough that i can cycle them out so yeah. it doesn't get stale yeah, I did drop off those four pages I that, that came Thank from us, the uh, Silver Anniversary yep. book. There evidently are not a whole lot of pictures from that time period, and that's um, going to be a little bit of a difficulty. But at any rate, um, I have uh, uh, Pat Rolf who's going to do something looking up and seeing what she can find um, for maybe doing kind of a history thing or something for that entrance to um, the, um, um, the Lizard Acres Pub. And so I just kind of put Kat and Shelly as a contact person to see what, make sure that what this group comes up with is appropriate for the spot. Um, but I'm assuming that the rest of the people on that committee will take that on, that you don't have to do that, unless you have ideas. No? We'll see what, we'll see what they come up with. Right, right, yeah. Um, the, the other place is that um, the general manager has identified that we could use the old village store area for our, which is now called a conference center, that we could do some decoration there. And this came from uh, when Judy, <laughs> Judy Gilpin, you were asking about that as a, a museum spot. And I said, no, it's going to be used as a conference center. Well, the front half is a conference center, but that will need some decor decoration as well. And um, my original thoughts were that maybe this um, area could be used uh, because it has three large um, pop-out windows um, that we could use that to display some of the club things, some smaller things. For example, we were not able to include um, uh, the beaters or the... Um, creative stitchers or uh, calligraphy people or even fused glass because most of our projects are big things. Um, this might be a place where we could use one of those windows to do rotating displays from those uh, clubs that have smaller items. And um, we could have, you know, them put, I, I think it did, I think those windows have shelves, glass shelves. Uh, um, they don't have locking, um, uh, locking um, security window kinds of things. And so we would have to address that because that would have to be done with the, the smaller items. Um, and I would expect that there would be maybe a, a one solid wall remaining in that <coughs> front conference area that 
would be able to be used for display. The other wall probably would have some cabinetry on it, and it would be a smaller wall, and of course, we need a place for a projection um, screen. I don't know if that's permanent or you just pull it down when you need it. Um, but so there might be some interior space. And uh, the other thing that I did is I talked with uh, the stained glass people about doing a rotating um, display because those two windows in the front are in the south side. They're always going to have beautiful sunlight, and that would go through uh, a stained glass hanging or something like that beautifully. One of those two windows may end up being a doorway because there has to be a door on that side, an exit door. And then the um, one on the side that faces uh, Rip and Soul um, will be turned into a doorway. But there's still one large remaining one. And um, they're, they're fairly large windows. So some kind of a rotational thing for some of the other clubs that we haven't been able to include might be a spot for that or something permanent. Shelley. Well, um, perhaps Idea. that's something we could do is invest in a, a locking wall behind that mm -hmm. window so we can have displays right. going on and on because if it's a it's a place for meetings, they're not right. going to have anything to display. No, they would, right, that's right. So it, it's open and, and available. Um, and even for, like, we talked about baskets that have, you know, they, they walk off very easily, baskets do, so, you know, we, those could be displayed if we had a, a locking thing. I can't see anybody's going to take a big hanging of a stained glass and walk away with it, but, <laughs> but um, you know, uh, we could have some, some doors put in that and, and uh, plan to do some, some rotation. So that idea, I guess I will leave in the hands of whoever's working on on uh, RH, that, that group. Um, and just as an aside, for especially for our new people, you know, we, we've arbitrarily assigned, assigned you to certain groups, but um, you can also join something else. You know, if um, um, Nancy's group at Beardsley is, is working on something and she puts an all call out and you wanna help with that particular idea, you know, you're welcome to do that and encouraged to do that. I just didn't want to expect that everybody would work on absolutely everything and, and uh, you know, overpower you. So that, that's available. And um, so do we have any other areas that you want to bring up to date that you've been working on that you want to talk about? Um, Judy? Yep. R.H. Johnson, Candy and Lois and I met last week and um, our main topic on our agenda was getting a color palette together. So it's not properly put together, but we worked off of several things that we could decide, and most of them actually were in the blues and the oranges and the reds, and to just kind of fit in with the feel of the waves when they get done. Uh, so we will have to meet uh, with Jack and go over where whatever could uh, fit. And then, Lois, you want to talk about Grandview Golf Course? <laughs> <laughs> put put, put on your, <laughs> pull, it for, pull it forward and, yeah, and it's on. There. We went over there after our meeting and uh, sort of missed each other in the parking lot, and you called me when you got home. We both had exactly the same um, feeling about that uh, mechanical building, or whatever that building is called. Okay. And we agreed that it should be painted the same color as the um, main building at okay. Grandview, and, um, and have all those side pillars painted the color of the roof. Oh, okay just to make it pop a little mm -hmm. bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we would have to look on the rotation, Jack, to find out when that's scheduled. Yeah. So you're talking about the uh, golf course maintenance building? Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, I think I do know that by design, they're supposed to blend in and not pop out. They're right. supposed to be kind of hidden um, from, the, from the view of the golfer, not supposed to be distracting while they're out there. It's not supposed to be a, an architectural input. Um, I do know that they've been going through one by one of those golf courses, and if I'm not mistaken, there's only one 
that they have left to do, then they have to go back and touch up another one um, because of the overseeding all equipment was up against one of the walls they have to get back to over at Stardust. So I'm not sure. I could find out which ones have been repainted. And they didn't just go through and repaint. They were going through replacing fascia boards and things that were just kind of neglected. Structural. Yeah. Just things, uh, those golf course uh, maintenance yards kind of get neglected a little bit. They don't get the public spotlight and someone says, hey, this needs fixed or what are you guys going to do about that? So um, they took great effort to carefully go through one by one. So I don't know if any time they'd be repainting uh, a maintenance yard again because it's a lot to get stuff moved away, bushes trimmed. and um, Yeah, that was just on our spreadsheet. Right. And we both agreed that the we don't want it to stick out because the suggestion was an accent color. Yeah. And um, that building would just stick out like a sore thumb right. if it wasn't done subtly. And we didn't even know whether the clubhouse was going to be painted at the same time. But our idea was to keep Grandview maintenance shed very, very subtle and uh, if there's an accent at all. I can, I can look in to see how recently it was painted, if it was painted. Is, is it another, is it a different color than the, mm -hmm. it, is it currently a different color than the clubhouse? Uh, it's a little different. A little different, a little oh. lighter. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Okay. Judy, quick question for you guys at RH. Have you been up around the walking track on the second floor up there at all to take a look at those faded paintings? Mm -mm. Okay. You mean Palm Ridge, right? Oh, I'm at Palm Ridge. Ridge. I'm sorry. I did that again. I'm not on Palm Ridge. No, that's, oh, that's right. Cat and Shelly. Yeah, Cat and Shelly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we went up to Palm, Palm Ridge and, you know, reassess the situation. Let me, let me refresh myself. What did I decide, Shelly? Um, yeah, we did look at those paintings. I, I think the biggest thing that we had decided is um, there needs to be a water bottle shelf installed instead of that old cubby system and then rearrange some of the paintings and some of the other things that exist within there. And then signage was another big thing. Multiple signs, ripped and torn signs, signs put up with push pins. I mean, just, it was a cluster. Kind of cleaning it up with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, cleaning, yeah. One more Everywhere. thing on RH. Um, Candy's looked into a larger wall clock for the pool. Oh, right. And Can I think she found see. one at, what did she say, 1500 up to, 3,000, which is still a lot of money. And I, I think if people really need to know the time, wear your, watch your Fitbit or something <laughs> until we have the money. I, I don't know whether that's an important well, thing, but she did find things that were outdoor lesser than 6,000 that we had had mentioned yeah previously. K K Casey had found uh, Casey had found a um, company right she sent off uh, a note that she had found a company where they're a lot less expensive but then um, Shelly and Shelly I guess came uh, said why don't we use digital and I think she sent that to you Jack, right? Yeah, I looked at it. It was a company called Big Clocks, and they make some fairly larger ones. The largest you can get the numbers are 12 inches. It's really not that much larger. Their indoor one goes up to 15 inches. Okay. Um, so I don't know if that's large enough, to, to be frank. Okay. So that's yet to be determined. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. Okay. Okay, anything else anybody has to report that they've worked on? Um, okay, I'd like to kind of go over these, um, uh, the added handout that you have to make sure we've got people covering the right things. Um, and for Mickey and Lois, um, we, last year when we um, started this process, we made contact with each of the clubs to ask them if they were interested in participating in the things that we were doing. And so there was a contact person that you know found out the, the feedback. Um, there are a number of clubs, so if you look at number eight down here, there's a number of clubs that are, you know, that were not contacted because we didn't we couldn't get to all of them. 
And um, and then there are some that I have Susan P's name on, and we need to to revise that. So. Um, and then other people have made contact because now they have a project that this group is working on. Uh, for example, um, I think Ceramics was first contacted by Susan P. And then now Nancy is going to be the contact person there because she has a project, potential project, that they're, that's going to be working on in, at Beardsley. So um, just so that we've got a person that's contacted all of them, and then I've made notes on here as to which ones have not been contacted, so uh, some connection can be made with them just to kind of wrap them into the process. Um, so um, for art, um, Mickey, it used to be Patty, and so I thought, all right, can you be the contact with the art club? Okay, I figured as long as you're a member, that works. Um, and then I put Shelly for calligraphy, and I've already talk, talked with Judy Ross, um, so she's already on board, but I'm trying to pull my name off of some of these things as well. Okay, then Basketeers, Lois, can you connect with them to see if they're interested in any, any okay, and they have not been contacted. Uh, Beaters, Judy, I believe you were originally going to talk to them, but then they didn't fit in, and so... Uh, I tried during the summer, and I couldn't get a hold oh, of them. Oh, yeah. So okay, so you'll able make that contact, okay, uh, because that they might now be able to participate with our idea of smaller things. Okay, Nancy Ceramics, uh, Clay, Shelley, because she's a part of that club, but Judy as well, other Judy Estrom, because you're already connected, and I didn't have the name of the um, the clay totem lady, but you have that, so both of you are kind of working there. Um, Nancy, you've talked recently to uh, copper and, and glass, fused glass, so you're the connection there. Um, none of these smaller club talk to. Um, they're very small clubs or clubs that might not fit in except for a rotation at the conference center. So should I leave, are we okay to leave that up to the people that are at RH to make those connections, that group? And if you need, um, if you need to make connections, if you decide to go with a rotation in the, in the conference center, that then you would connect with them. Okay? Um, number eight on the, on the list here. These are the small clubs that have small items as well as their small clubs. So um, we couldn't find a place for, you know, we didn't have an idea for how, the, how we would display their things. But if we use the conference center windows, um, then someone would need to connect with them. So I guess when that decision has been made, if the group from um, uh, R.H. Johnson group who would be working on the conference center would make those connections as needed because they haven't been connected with. Okay, Nancy has done Desert Garden. Uh, okay, Lapidary. Um, Susan had contacted them and they said they could do a rotation in other places across the community, but they'd need um, just, you know, kind of a, a, a locking cabinet kind of thing. And I think that we're, I don't know that we're going to get into that at this point, but they have lots of their own display windows and they're not even filled. So, um, I don't know that we need to continue with them. And if we do, it maybe the RH group could take that over if that happens. But, um, okay, leather crafters uh, have not been contacted. You're, you're okay with making that connection? Okay. And then the same thing with uh, Macronet. I don't know how we would use them, but I did find out that they do macrame. So um, if somebody wants to do that connection, Mickey, do you want to do that one too? 
No. Um, right, across the hall from the art group. <laughs> yeah, yeah. facility. Right. Mm -hmm. As long as you're right there, it just takes a minute to pop in. Um, Judy, you've taken uh, the on the metal club, um, and not very. <laughs> they've been closed, and it's been very difficult. I talked with to the, them when they were still in commission. Yeah, right. But, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but um, they might in the future be <laughs> a real good resource. Um, I mean, I would love to see them make sculptures and make uh, wind sculptures and put them in Beardsley Park. I mean, heck, that would be tremendous. So I'll just leave your name on that, Judy? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, uh, Patchers, um, Judy, Esther, are you willing to cross me off of that and just take that over? I'll just cross my name off. Candy's got photography, uh, rip and sew. Uh, well, we got Shelly and who volunteered to do that project, right? Shelly and Judy? Yeah. Okay, so we can cross off the two Sues. Um, stained glass, um, I've made the contact there, and I've got Judy, your name on there. Do you want to, you just help with too many things. You want to, you okay there or you want to cross off or? No, I'm okay. Okay, all right. We just changed presidents too, so it's kind of over. Okay, oh great, good connection. Um, Silvercraft is kind of the same as Lapidary. They didn't feel that they would be, you know, um, appropriate for the things that we were doing. And um, they do have beautiful windows in that RH uh, cons um, complex, so I think that Probably, I don't know how we would connect with them or what we would, would find, but Kat made the original connection. Um, Weavers, Judy, you again, Judy Esther, okay. Um, woodworking, Nancy has made the connection and has the people to, to talk with in terms of the, the project, but um, I think they're on board. And then independent artists, um, Lois, you know Diane, Lakoti, and, and so that you could connect with them. Oh, perfect. Okay. Okay. So that's kind of updated, and I'll make sure that we have all have a copy of that. Okay. What else? Uh, anything else for the good of the order here? You said the next meeting was going to be the at next. Queens? Yes, the next meeting is uh, December eighth at nine o'clock, and it'll be in room five at uh, Coons because this will be under construction. So um, we will meet there. And um, hopefully Jack will have the weavings up. I'll be on the ship after the ocean Oh, <laughs> do you want to call in? You could call in. <laughs> OK, so you'll be absent and just, yeah, well, you could call in, absolutely. Yeah, uh, Karen Repkin will tell you how to do that and how to make that work for sure. Okay, everybody else is, uh, is good? Any other comments that you'd like to make? Comments from the, from the audience out there? Who, who do we have with us today? What's your name so we can put you on the, on the attendance? Mike Cassandra. Okay. Here you go. There's your, your attendance thing. Um, any comments? Okay. I will then adjourn the meeting. Thank you very much. And I'll turn this over to Kat for next time around. All right. <laughs>